Greetings, this is J. Peter Berzizi, and this demo on using ActiveSync with an Android phone is from my Exchange Server 2010 training course. So let's jump over to a client system and let's demonstrate the functionality of ActiveSync. All right, so let's have a little bit of fun with this. Obviously with ActiveSync, it's nearly impossible through a screen capture to show you what's happening on our literal mobile devices. However, each individual device maker, whether it's BlackBerry or whether it's Google or Microsoft, they all provide emulators. So I downloaded the Android emulator and I just wanted to show you how setting up your mobile account now that we have ActiveSync up and running is pretty awesome. So here if we open up email, it asks us about configuring our email. Let's type in the information and we'll set this up for one of our Globomantics employees, Alan Reed. And we'll click next. And you notice it asks us if we want POP3, IMAP, or Exchange. Now we're going to be discussing POP3 and IMAP in a future lesson. But if we chose one or the other, it would not provide us with the same level of flexibility and security of data that we have by choosing Exchange. And that's because the Exchange ActiveSync connection allows us to perform a remote wipe of our phone in the event someone were to steal it. So we click Exchange. It puts in all of our information here. We click Next. And it asks us for some information. Email checking frequency. Do we want automatic push? Or do we want to choose one of these other options? Automatic push is fine with me. I prefer it that way, actually. The amount to synchronize, one day, or we can change that as well. Three days, one week, two weeks, one month. Do we want to send email from this account by default? Notify me when email arrives. Sync contacts from this account. This is the only email account on this emulator, so we're going to send email from this account by default, and we'll click Next. Your account is set up and email is on its way. Give this account a name. And we'll call it Globosync. And then we can put in the way we want Alan's name to be displayed. Let's say A read. Done. Okay, so now what do we do? <laughs> There's nothing here. Well, if we click menu, you can see we can compose. Let's do that. Let's compose an email. Let's send an email to administrator because that's actually who we're logged in as on this system. At and we'll click send. And as we can see, the message came in from Alan Reed to our administrator's account. Let's reply back to him. <laughs> you have got to love these simulators. I know I do. All right, well, there you go. So we can appreciate that we have ActiveSync up and running. Let's just jump over to Outlook Web App. So the mailbox is working just fine between all of our different types of access methods, whether it's the ActiveSync connection, the Outlook Web App connection. And what we want to do at this point is take a look at some of the options. Okay, and let's take a look at our phone options. And you can see the Android phone is listed here under our mobile phones. So using these settings here, if this were a real device, you would be able to access your device recovery password, which would be an option here. You could initiate a remote device wipe or block your phone if you lose it. Here we can click block phone. Do you want to block this device from synchronizing with Exchange? 
So hopefully you're able to see the power of all of these different options when it comes to your users being able to sync up their phones with their Outlook, go into Outlook web app and perform various recovery password administration or swipe their system or block their phone. This allows them to handle some of their administration themselves. This way if they lose their phone at two o'clock in the morning, they're not calling you. Instead, they're going into Outlook web app and they are blocking their phone or swiping it themselves. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.